So the only uh, times that you guys had together was between the time you signed him, which was what year? Um, 2019, my hottest year. I signed him my hottest year, 2019, December. Okay. December, so 2019 to 2022, you signed him, you um, recorded him, and then after that, he left. So you are not making money from his new music. Those accusations are not true, correct? The, I'm not making money from his new music that is dropping as Amalia music. No, we we not stopping his growth. We're not stopping him from dropping music when he left. He was gone. Amalia music. Okay, you see, we live in, uh, will I say, a time when a lot of our people, in, especially in Nigeria, uh, can be, um, will I say, they can easily believe stories. Because we've, seen, we've heard people uh, who have said that uh, our former president, immediate past president, General Muhammad Buhari, he died and was replaced by a clone named Jibril from Sudan. And so, you know, it's very easy for people to believe uh, I mean, uh, all of these things. So now we've known by the laws of physics, you weren't even in Nigeria. And it's a lie. Everything. There's a reason why. Um, there's a best. There's a reason why a lot of people probably trying to blame me for their own reason. I don't know why, but it's a. Everybody can see it's a lie. Like, like something happened to him on the day he was out. Why there people are trying to cover up some things? Like no, I said, no. So, um, uh, Aziz, you cannot say that everybody knows it's a lie. A lot of people are blaming you. In case you don't know, you've lost hundreds of thousands of followers of, on Instagram. So we need to clear the air. We need yeah, to clear that, the air that, with the truth. That, that's true. That the losing followers is not like anything to me right now. Like mobile is is late. It's not here anymore. That's a lot. That's more than I'll rather lose all my followers and have them here. You understand? My followers is not is that's a that's a very small thing in this situation. It's very, very small. But to to her is really, really important. And I believe um, the Nigerian police are doing their job. I mean, the government agency, they're going to do their, they're doing their job and um, the truth is going to come out. One thing has already come out. When you say the truth is going to come out, I mean, we've already begun to see some... The whole coming. truth, the whole yeah. truth is going to come out. Yeah, 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 no, but we've already began, began to see some truth coming out. Uh, the hospital, or I mean, I don't know if you could call it a hospital, let's say the clinic or the medical facility that he was taken to, uh, they said that he was brought in dead on arrival. But we do know that one of the young men around him, let's say essentially a groupie, had said that he spoke with him while he was at the clinic and that he talked with him and he took a photo with him. But then this actually contradicts the story from the medical facility that he was brought in dead. Another thing that we do know is that the auxiliary nurse who actually injected him has been uh, repudiated by the Nursing Council of Nigeria, saying that you know she wasn't registered. In this, essentially, she was a quack. You know, so we're beginning to see some of these things coming come to light. And you know, I think in in the coming days, you know, the opinion of the public might change. My question to you, Aziz, additional, Fashola, is this. Are you willing to go back to Nigeria if the Nigerian police wants to question you? Um, hundred percent. If they can guarantee my safety. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, um, there's a lot of hungry mom that don't really want to hurt. Not the truth. They've been poisoned by the media, you know. So, if they can guarantee my safety, I'll be there. That's a very reasonable uh, request because I mean I. Um, I had people in Nigeria, um, because of my political views, who were very, very uh, morbidly against me. And um, I went to Nigeria. You know, I went to Nigeria. I didn't have any security, though. But I went to Nigeria, you know, and um, I was able to... Uh, I stayed, I think, about 48 hours in Nigeria. And I left. But then after I left, I saw that a number of uh, some of these people who had uh, political differences with me were saying that if they had found me, you know, like they would have uh, snuffed life out of me. So it is very reasonable. So what we're going to say now, this is not a question to you. This is not a question to you, as you don't have to respond to this. Now, we call on the Nigerian police and I'm going to reach them after this interview. Can you guarantee the safety of Aziz? additional fashion you know can you guarantee his safety publicly guarantee his safety 
so that he can return to Nigeria if needs be to answer questions and to clear his name further. That is to the police. Now, one final thing before we go, one final thing before we go. We've we started from the very end, you know, but let's start from the beginning. How did you meet this young man, Ilirio Olua Oladimeji Aloba? How did you meet him? Uh, I met him online. I met him by um, seeing his videos online, his freestyles, his songs, or the song when he just used some of my words, or when he just, I just, I've just been watching him online and I, I sent him a message. Wow. And who gave him the name Mobad? Um, I don't know. That's the name I met him with. <laughs> okay. Now, one last thing. I know I said the last question, but one last thing. And I'm like Oliver Twist. One last thing. We saw a video by, uh, would I say, a pastor. It's a 70-year-old pastor. Whether it's 69, it's going to be 70. Pastor Tunde Bakari. And he said... The reason why Mobad died was because he was hanging around bad people. What do you say to that? Ah, oh, if I have to start, that's 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 the problem. That that's what I mean. Like that's what that's the conversation. I don't know if we want to go into that conversation now. But I personally believe that he was actually stressed as much. He needed help. I believe he's been bullied. I believe he's um um in whatever there's people on his name, there's people all over him that is in danger, but he's just not in danger from us. He's not in danger from me. If he's in danger from me, if anybody's scared of me, you will see nobody's gonna come out on videos doing all of this. I don't belong to any court whatsoever. I moved to Nigeria in like 2019 from England. I don't know what court is. Like I've been getting away from um from the courts in Nigeria. I've been running away there's so many times they've in this Lagos. I've been getting away from it. I actually I'm actually anti courtes I'm against it because of so many times they've tried to force me in it, but thank God they've never they've never succeeded in doing it. So talking about that. I really think everybody that's acting like they're trying to help, they're not trying to help. I believe that they know a lot of things. People around them know a lot of things. I believe they know a lot of things because um, if they stop taking the conspiracy, if they stop directing the conspiracy my way, maybe people will see a lot of things. You know, I do understand maybe you're surrounding yourself with a lot of bad people, like a lot of cultists. And I can see from the way people are trying to cover up and the people that are coming up and the people that are sending money from the beginning and with the experience of what has happened around them. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a, I just hope the police will find out a lot of things, man. Well, we've been able to clear up a lot of issues, you know, and I really thank you, Aziz, Adishin of Fashala for talking to me. And I just want to say this, you know, to the world listening, because we're going to have people from all over the world uh, globally listening. We're going to have a global audience. The Nigerian police and the Nigerian law enforcement have actually been doing an excellent job in unraveling the circumstances that led to the death of Ilhiri Oliwa Oladimeji Aloba. They've had a postmortem. They've had an autopsy done in record time. His body was exhumed. And right now there's a coroner's inquest. And I urge the world, the global media, to be patient. The Nigerian police, they're going to unravel the circumstances that led to his death. Aziz, thank you for joining us and God bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.